MSI sent over their RTX 5070 Ti Gaming Trio OC+, and while I wish I could say that this is an easy recommendation, the reality is good luck finding one. Availability is already looking rough, and pricing? Well, let's just say MSRP might as well be a fantasy at this point. It's a shame because I really think this could have been the best card in the whole stack. But putting all that aside, let's take a look at what this card actually brings to the table in terms of design, features, thermals, and a first look at performance. Is this a GPU? worth waiting for? Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Today, we'll be taking a look at the MSI RTX 5070 Ti Gaming Trio OC+. MSI has released various RTX 5070 Ti graphics card models to the market, and the Gaming Trio OC+, is considered to be more of a mid-tier model. So below it, you have the Ventus and Shadow, and above it, you have the Inspire and Vanguard. As for this overview, we'll be taking a look at various aspects pertaining to this graphics card, like the design, features, thermals, and a first look at performance to see what this card is really capable of. Stick around because this one gets interesting. Let's start off with an unboxing so you guys can see what to expect from the packaging and what's included. The card comes in a fairly standard sized GPU box. It has a picture of the card on the front with the MSI plus NVIDIA branding and logos. Then on the back, you have some more information pertaining to features and the design that this card has to offer. Opening up the box, I'm pleased to see how the card comes protected with plenty of cushioning foam to prevent any damage during shipping and it comes wrapped in an anti-ES bag. Along with that, there is a quick start guide included. If you're new to PC building, it might be a good idea to give that a read. Then you have a 16-pin power adapter, which I'll be giving some comments about later on. Then the last thing we have is the GPU anti-sag stand. Next, I wanted to talk about specifications. The RTX 5070 Ti is powered by NVIDIA's latest Blackwell architecture, and this specific GPU is based on the GB203 die and is built with TSMC's 4 nanometer process. It has a die size of 378mm square and has an SMC count of 70 and it features 8960 CUDA cores, 280 texture mapping units, and it has 96 ROPs, which my sample does actually have. And the reason why I say that is because there have been numerous reports of RTX 50 series cards having missing ROPs. I highly recommend downloading GPU-Z to check if your card has the correct amount. The RTX 5070 Ti also has 280 5th gen tensor cores and 70 4th generation ray tracing cores. This card has a base clock of 2295 MHz and this specific model from MSI has a rated boost clock of up to 2572 MHz regardless of which BIOS you're using as it has a physical switch on the card itself. As for the memory, we've got 16 gigabytes of GDDR7 which is running at 28 gigabits per second and utilizes a 256 bit bus. The card has a stock maximum power rating of 300 watts. Moving on and let's talk about aesthetics, design and build quality of the MSI RTX 5070 Ti Gaming Trio OC+. At this point, I've used several MSI graphics cards which have used their gaming trio design and cooler and I've always had a good experience with these models. I think they look great and their acoustics and thermal performance has typically been solid. Now as for the RTX 5070 Ti, we find it carrying the mantle as a lot of the design elements and aesthetics from the previous gen have been brought forward and in my opinion that's a good thing because if it's worked well in the past then there's really no need to drastically deviate away from it. Honestly I respect MSI for taking this if it ain't broke don't fix it approach. It's kind of similar to what Nvidia did with their Founders Edition cards. They carried over the same basic look from one generation to the next, only making changes where necessary to handle the new hardware requirements like higher power draw and also the higher cooling needs. Upon first glance, I'll admit, I thought MSI might have literally reused their last generation cooler design here because the card looks so familiar, but that's not a bad thing at all. MSI did make a few subtle tweaks, but they've essentially retained that signature gaming trio look we know and love. The card features that classic black and dark gray color scheme, accented by some gunmetal highlights. This gives it a sleek, mature appearance, more on the understated side compared to the flashier GPUs that are out there. The shroud still has those sharp, angular lines we saw in the previous generation, which really makes it pop out and give it a dynamic, aggressive flair without really going overboard. There are also some textured sections near the center of the shroud that kind of resemble a carbon fiber weaved pattern when they catch the light. Obviously, it's not real carbon fiber. The entire shroud is actually made of plastic, but that little texture detail complements the overall theme and adds a bit of visual interest. As for the materials and build, even though MSI went with 
a plastic shroud, it feels high quality and quite sturdy. There's very minimal flex when I give it a press, and no creaking or cheap feel at all. I'll be honest, some metal or aluminum in the shroud would have been nice to see for that extra premium touch, especially when it's considerably marked up over MSRP, but overall the cart is put together well and feels robust. Now cooling is a big part of any GPU's design, and MSI is using their updated Tri-Frozer 4 thermal solution on this card. This includes three fans using what MSI calls their Torx Fan 5.0 design. I've also seen them refer to these fans as Storm Force fans in some of their marketing materials. Essentially, they've tweaked the fan blades for better airflow and lower noise. Instead of a traditional individual fan blade, MSI links sets of three fan blades together using one outer ring arc, almost forming a curved tri-blade unit. These blade groups are also tilted at a 22 degree angle to push more air downward into the heatsink with each rotation. Additionally, there's a circular rim around the edge of each fan that helps focus the airflow and reduce the turbulence or recirculation. MSI claims this design boosts airflow and also keeps noise levels down compared to previous fan designs. We'll talk more about thermal performance data later on, but based on my experience with MSI's previous Torx fans, I have some pretty high hopes. The older Torx 4.0 and 5.0 fans on cards like the RTX 3080 and 4090 Gaming X Trio were already very effective at moving air while staying fairly quiet, so I'm optimistic this card will uphold that reputation. You've probably noticed that translucent streak running across the front of the shroud as well. Those are the RGB lighting elements, and it looks like MSI made them fairly prominent on this card. In fact, they seem a tad bit larger or more elongated than the accents on some of their previous gen cards, which I think was a smart move. The LEDs are bright, and the diffusion through those smoked or frosted sections Sections is smooth, so you get a nice glow rather than pinpoint lighting, which you know makes the card look more uniform. Of course, you can customize the lighting through MSI software to match your build or turn it off entirely if you prefer a stealthy look. Either way, it's a nice little touch that adds personality to the card without being overbearing. Now let's talk about the size and form factor. Because the Gaming Trio cards are known to be on the larger side, the MSI RTX 5070 Ti Gaming Trio OC Plus measures around 338 millimeters in length, which is about 13.3 inches long. For context, that's basically just as long as the 4090 Gaming X Trio I looked at previously, which is pretty wild for a 70 Ti class card. So make no mistake, even though this isn't a flagship 5090, it's still an absolute beast in terms of dimensions. If you have a smaller mid-tower case or you're using front-mounted radiators, you'll want to double check that you have enough clearance for this GPU. On the plus side, it is a 2.5 slot card, so you don't have to worry about crowding up your entire expansion area and block off all the slots. Now even at 50 millimeters of thickness, with a big heatsink and triple fans, you can guess this card has some heft to it. It weighs roughly 1.3 kilograms, that's not as extreme as the 2 plus kilogram weight of the 4090, but that's still a hefty card by any standard. With that much weight and length, GPU sag can become a concern over time. The good news is that MSI includes a GPU support stand in the box to combat this. It's basically a little jack or brace that you place under the far end of the card to your case's floor or attach it to a slot. It props up the card to keep it level. I was really happy to see this included because at 338mm of length, the card does extend pretty far out of the PCI Express slot. Using the support stand will take a lot of stress off that motherboard and the PCIe slot, potentially expanding the lifespan of both the card and your board. I highly recommend using it. I will comment though that I wish it was made out of a more premium material. This little stand is made entirely out of plastic and it does actually feel quite flimsy and cheap. Let's take a quick tour of the card's design. On the top edge, MSI has placed its signature Dragon logo alongside the GeForce RTX branding. Unlike some of the past previous gaming trio models, the MSI logo here does not light up, which you know is a shame because I thought it would have complemented the accented strips that wrap around the shroud. This would have ensured lighting is visible from multiple angles and make it really pop in the glass window, but you can see the stripes do do that. At the back end, MSI has added an anti-bending metal brace to reinforce the PCB and prevent sagging. Helpful for a card which is this long, it's small but effective structural improvement that enhances durability. Flipping to the bottom, we see a full-length heatsink with a dense fin stack, optimized for heat dissipation. Five copper heat pipes weave through the cooler, all converging at a nickel-plated copper base plate for direct contact with the GPU and GDDR7 memory. A key design feature here is MSI's core pipes, which are flattened at the base rather than rounded, and MSI says that this increases contact surface area, which improves heat transfer and ensures more efficient cooling. 
MSI used a similar setup on the RTX 4090 Gaming X Trio, and it worked well there, so I expect strong cooling performance of this card. Now, on the rear I.O., we have display outputs and a glimpse of how the heatsink is arranged at the tail end. The MSI RTX 5070 Ti Gaming Trio OC Plus comes with a pretty standard array of ports for a modern high-end GPU, 3 display port, and 1 HDMI. What's nice is that these are the latest generation ports. The display ports are version 2.1b, and the HDMI is 2.1b as well. And this is great to see because it really means the card is fully future-proofed for upcoming monitors and TVs. With display port 2.1b, you've got tons of bandwidth on tap, so high resolution, high refresh, setups. Think 4K at 480Hz or 8K at 120Hz with DSC. It will work well with those high-end displays. Now let's talk about the metal backplate, because MSI did a great job here. The full-length metal backplate spans around the entire card, adding rigidity and preventing PCB flex. It has a metallic black finish with a brush texture and an MSI Dragon logo in the center. While the logo doesn't light up, it has a sort of polychrome look to it which is cool and it combines well with the backplate and gives the card a more premium finished look. Beyond aesthetic, it serves as a functional role in cooling and protection. It shields the PCB from dust and damage while also helping dissipate heat. The thermal pads underneath that transfer heat from components like the VRM and memory to the backplate which can get warm under load. MSI also added airflow cutouts at the end of the backplate to work with the heatsink and fans to improve ventilation. This pass-through cooling reduces heat buildup inside your case, similar to NVIDIA's Founders Edition design. Small details like this, along with the robust heatsink and core pipes, show that MSI has put real thought into keeping this card cool under load. All in all, when it comes to the design and the build of this card, I'm thoroughly impressed. MSI kept a winning formula from the last generation and refined it, and the result is a GPU that looks sleek, feels solid, and should perform well. It's got that distinct gaming trio aesthetic which I've always been a fan of, with a neutral black-gray color scheme that can blend well into any build. At the same time, it has a bit of a flash with the RGB accents if you want to show it off. The build quality gets a big thumbs up from me, the shroud is sturdy, the fans and cooler are robust, and the metal backplate and extra support bracket all contribute to a really solid piece of hardware. Before we move on to thermals and power data along with some overclocking figures, I did want to briefly talk about the included adapter. What I really like is how MSI colorized the 16-pin connector, so that the user can ensure that their adapter is plugged in all the way. By not having it plugged in all the way, it can actually create a melting hazard if the pins aren't making proper contact, and the pins within it aren't loose or recessed, as you might have seen from adapters made by other companies. They stay consistent throughout. Alright, so for thermals and power, I decided rather than showing you guys a boring chart, I'm showing you some live gameplay, and for this test, I used Alan Wake 2 because it's a very demanding GPU-bound title, and ignore the bad performance because I'm running this game at 4K native with high settings and path tracing enabled as I really wanted to tax the GPU to get the best data as we're focused on thermals and performance here. And this gameplay footage is from a 30 minute session to allow temps and power to normalize. As you guys can see, we maintain around 65C on our GPU core and 68C for our memory temp. And do note this was tested in a room with an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. Along with that, this is using the silent BIOS as that's what the card comes configured with out of the box. And there's been no manual tweak here. But overall, these temps are good, allowing the card to comfortably boost to 2775MHz, well above the stock advertised speed. In terms of power, we're looking at around 290 to 300 watts of power, which isn't horrendous, but I will be making some future content with this card, exploring power limiting and undervolting to really hit the efficiency sweet spot. Now when it comes to overclocking an MSI afterburner, I was able to apply a plus 460MHz offset to the core and plus 2000 to the memory, with the power limit slider at 110%. Please note, and this was something I mentioned in my last video, that right now due to a bug within the NVIDIA drivers, voltage control doesn't work with the 50 series and attempting to do so can prevent the card from boosting. Regardless, without overvolting applied, in Alan Wake 2, after about 30 minutes, we see the card comfortably boosting to above 3200 MHz, and our memory is running at effectively 32 gigabits per second. Now, when it comes to thermals for the GPU core and memory, we're actually looking at slightly lower temps, and the reason for that is because I've actually applied my own custom fan curve here. I always find it a bit silly when other reviewers show overclocking capabilities, but then don't play around with the fan curve to compensate for the higher power draw. I mean, you're tweaking those settings, so you might as well 
adjust the fan. It's the most sensible thing to do. And I didn't even need to go overboard here. You guys can see that we're still running at around 45-50% to 50 fan speed, which is still very quiet. In terms of power draw, we're now looking at around 300-330 to 330 watts of power, since we've given the card a bit of extra headroom. But as you guys can see, the cooler has no issues handling that much power. So with the overclock applied, I did run a 3D Mark Steel Nomad test and attained a score of 7088, which would place me at the 53rd spot in terms of this combination. Now, I was using the NVIDIA hotspot driver, so that seemed to cause a reporting issue with 3D Mark, so that's why it states unknown GPU and CPU. But this gives you guys a bit of a performance preview. But stay tuned because in the near future, I will be uploading a video with lots of gaming benchmarks and comparisons to past generation cards to really see if the RTX 5070 Ti is really worth it. Overall, the MSI RTX 5070 Ti Gaming Trio OC Plus delivers solid cooling, a sleek design, and impressive out-of-the-box performance. While availability and pricing remain a major concern, the hardware itself is well-built and holds up well under demanding workloads, but the real question is how does it stack up in actual gaming? Stick around for that, you'll know the answer very soon. As for now, that's going to be wrapping it up for this one and we'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.